Hi guys! The bed leveling is one of the first adjustments you make on your 3D printer right before your first print and also one of the most important. In this video we will go through all the steps to correctly adjust the leveling of your print bed and we will also share a few pro tips so that you can get the perfect first layer that you are looking for. You want to know more? Stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, please don't forget to hit like on this video and if you are not a subscriber yet, please click on the subscribe button so you can follow all our work. And if you like our work and wish to help the channel, please join our Patreon page or click on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, back to the leveling. This adjustment has two main focus. To planarize the print surface and to set the nozzle to bed distance. There are many things that can mess with the leveling over time, for example, springs not compressed or strong enough. You should compress correctly your springs or, if that is not possible, change the springs with ones with more strength. Forcing the bed when removing the prints will also mess with the leveling. Removable print surfaces are the best choice, like a glass or a magnetic surface. Also, if the carriage is not stable enough, will give you problems with the leveling. Always check your carriage axis and wheels if equipped. Our previous video explains this in detail, so check it out. And finally, temperature. Some materials are affected more than others with temperature, and your print surface can warp because of that. This is why we should always run the leveling procedure with the bed at printing temperature. To level the bed, start with the springs compressed the necessary amount so that the knobs won't turn by themselves with the printer's vibrations. Manually lower your Z until the nozzle almost touches the bed. If you need to adjust the height of the Z end stop, go ahead and do it. For the Creality Ender 3 users, you will notice that the Z end stop has a piece of plastic sticking out preventing the switch to go any lower. On our machine, we just cut that piece of plastic out and this way we can adjust to the correct height. Next, we run the home sequence and heat up the bed to the print temperature. Now, for this next step, the nozzle must be clean with absolutely no filament remains. If it does, heat up the nozzle first and clean it. Some printers have a leveling sequence in the menus where they can place automatically the nozzle on each corner of the bed. If your printer does not have that, disable the motors and move the print head by hand. It's also possible to write a G-code sequence to move the print head automatically on each corner. If you prefer this option instead, check the video description for the link and download our G-code sequence. Next, get the thinnest piece of paper you can find. Normally, a 0.1 mm thick paper will do just fine. Just don't use things like thick credit cards and the reason is very simple. The point of the paper is to use as reference to set the nozzle to bed distance on all the points on the bed. For the printer, this will be the Z0 coordinate, but in fact, mechanically, it will be at 0.1 mm from the bed. This is the reason why you should get the thinnest piece of paper, so that your zero can be the closest as possible to the bed. Next is your first layer height. This is defined by your slicer. Some slicers use this value as a percentage of the normal layer height while others use an exact value. So in reality, your first layer height will be the sum of the thickness of the paper you used plus the first layer height defined in your slicer. So, move the nozzle over the first corner of the bed and while making small movements with the paper between the bed and the nozzle, turn the knobs until you feel the nozzle starting to touch the paper. 
move on to the next corner and repeat the process. When moving the print head over the bed, move it slowly and keep an eye on the nozzle to prevent it from scratching the print surface. Most printers have four leveling knobs, but some of them have only three. Once the last corner is done, go over the first corner and check again. You should repeat as many times as needed until all four corners are at the correct height. Last but not least, check the center. The center cannot be adjusted, so if you notice a difference in height at the center, it means your bed is warped. Warpage is a big concern. In terms of flatness, glass plates are better than aluminum ones, and that's one of the reasons why users like to add a glass on their beds. The downside of the glass, for the Cartesian printers at least, is the extra weight on the y-axis. This will make you reduce speeds and accelerations to avoid ghosting issues. Some beds might be already warped from factory, and some might warp after heating up like we mentioned earlier. For warped beds, it's better to use the mesh bed leveling feature. The mesh bed leveling consists on measuring the flatness of the bed at several points and this way creating the mesh. A leveling sensor does this automatically. The printer will then use that mesh data to continuously adjust the height while printing. In other words, the Z will keep moving up and down while printing to maintain the correct nozzle to bed distance. Some printers come already equipped with the leveling sensor and you can easily upgrade the ones that don't, in most cases. But if by any reason you don't want to install a leveling sensor on your printer, you can still use the mesh leveling feature by using the manual process instead. But for that, you need to edit your printer's firmware. This is how you can do it. First, you need to download the firmware for your printer. If you already have a copy of it, you can skip this part. On Marlin's website, you can find the latest version and the basic config files for several printers on the market. You can use Visual Studio together with Platform I.O. to compile it, or Arduino IDE if your board is an 8-bit model. Open the config.h file and search for the line Define Probe Manually. This line will tell the machine that we will not use any leveling sensor. The line below defines the Z height on each point when running the leveling sequence. Next, we need to enable the mesh bed leveling line. And the restore leveling after G28. The G28 command, which is the home command, also disables the leveling by default. Enabling this line restores the leveling automatically, so you don't need to add any command in your slicer. Next, we need to find the mesh bed leveling settings. Here, we have the mesh inset. This value means that the leveling points will be located at a certain distance from the edge of the bed. We will use 15 millimeters from the edge. And then, we have the number of points for the mesh. We will use a 4x4 matrix with a total of 16 points. The LCD bed leveling. This will enable the menus on the display for the leveling. Next, we have the Z steps value, which is basically how much the Z will move for each step, and how much the Z is allowed to go down after the zero coordinate. For these, we will just leave as is. We will also have the mesh edit menu. If we enable this, we will have access to the mesh data on the display, and we will able to edit each point. Ok, this is all we need to change in the firmware, so now go ahead and compile it and upload the firmware to the printer. With the new firmware installed, you can now test the leveling sequence. Start by heating up the bed first, and when it reaches the set temperature, click on bed leveling and then level bed. The printer will home all the axes and then will move the nozzle to the first point. 
We now use the paper to level as we did before, but with the difference that now you don't use the knobs to raise or lower the bed. Instead, you use the display to raise or lower the Z. When you feel the nozzle starting to touch the paper, click on the button and it will move to the next position. Repeat the process for all the other positions. When done, you will see the leveling complete on the screen. And then, you need to store the data to the EPROM. The mesh data can be retrieved, and if you use Octoprint, you can install the BAD Visualizer plugin and upload the mesh so you can see in 3D how your bed looks like. There is one more setting that you need to know, and it's the bed level fading. If you add a value here, the printer will make the Z compensation from the start but slowly reduce the compensation and eventually stop compensating when reaching the fade value. Now you are ready for some test prints. There are many test patterns online that you can use, but we like to use our own test patterns. The first pattern will make the nozzle travel over the bed twice, so it's a great way to test if the mesh leveling is working correctly. The second pattern prints several discs all over the bed. This pattern will not only test the leveling, but also the layer height. If you want to use our test patterns, just check the link below in the video description. While printing the patterns, you will probably need to make some adjustments. You can use the bed Z value to correct the height if you are using the manual mesh leveling or the baby steps feature if you are using a leveling sensor. When adjusting the height while printing, try not to use the knobs to make this adjustment. Adjusting the height with the knobs while printing, it's a very easy and handy technique. But when using the manual mesh level or auto bed level, this technique will mess with the leveling of the bed and ruin your mesh. There are some key points that can help you troubleshoot the first layer. Things like an elephant foot on the base of the prints will indicate that the first layer height was too low and the filament was compressed during the first layers. If you hear the extruder clicking while printing the first layer, it's also an indication that the height is too low. Because there is not enough room for the filament to flow out, the pressure increases in the hot end and the extruder struggles to push the filament in. If you see roughness on the first layer, it also indicates you are printing too close to the bed. If your filament is not sticking correctly on the print surface, it means that the layer height value is too high or you have adhesion issues. And if you see space between the lines, that also indicates that you are printing too far. Turning on the brim in the slicer is also a good idea because the printer will start with the brim and you can use that to confirm that everything is okay before it starts to print the actual model. Like we mentioned earlier, there are several things that can mess with the leveling. So, if you decide to use the manual mesh leveling, we recommend that you run the leveling sequence often and this way making sure that you are using a valid mesh. For a perfect first layer, you also need to guarantee that your print surface has good adhesion. But that is a topic for another video. So this is it you guys, hope you liked the video and if yes, please give it a like. Also, if you are not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to follow us also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time, bye!